Welcome to this edition of Empower 305. With us here today is a very special guest. It is Commissioner Damien Pardo of District 2. Welcome. Thank you very much, Kenya. Thank you. It is a pleasure to have you. We waited a bit. Pleasure to, to be here. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I know you like the lighting. <laughs> I love it. And I love the studio. It's really nice. Thank you nice. so much. Commissioner Pardo was elected to represent District 2 in the city of Miami in November of 23. He is a lifelong resident of District 2, having been raised in Coconut Grove and currently residing in Morningside, right? Correct. Yeah. That's awesome. I learned something today. Yeah. I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> the last 24 years in Morningside. Wow. It's a beautiful yeah. area. Definitely. So off camera, we were talking about that you went to ski here locally, right? Yes. You went to St. Hugh here in... I went to St. Hugh, which was the old St. Hugh School. It was across from the graveyard in the Grove. It's no longer there. They tore that down a long time ago. All my schools have been torn down. <laughs> uh, St. Hugh was torn down. And then I went to the old Belen Jesuit, which was on 8th Street and 7th Avenue. And that's been torn down, too. <laughs> so from but, there, yeah. But Belen is still a, a, a very No, good Belen place. is fantastic. It's a campus. When I went it there, is. we had nothing. We, we only had an area that we called the Dust Bowl. <laughs> that was it. There was no other. There was no baseball field. There was nothing. So, But what they always had was a really big focus on values and excellent academics. And that hasn't changed. We can see that. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> so as a lifelong resident of District 2, what do you see as the most pressing issues facing the community? And what specific strategies do you have on how to address them? Well, the first one has to be infrastructure. In District 2, we have something they often refer to as the urban core, which is really downtown. When I think about downtown Miami, that's really the heart muscle of the body. It's the biggest economic engine, not only for Dade County, but I would argue of all of Florida. And yet we don't treat it any differently. <laughs> we treat it like one fifth of everything else in the way we allocate funding. And I'm talking about the county as well and the state and the federal government. The urban core of Miami-Dade County should be the responsibility of every single governing body. And we need to invest in it, not just because we need the proper stormwater master plan and climate resiliency and all those other issues, but we need the infrastructure to deal with traffic. So oftentimes residents will talk about traffic and they'll talk about flooding. All of those things are due to infrastructure. So I have a big, big emphasis on trying to help educate people about the importance of the urban core and why we need to do a much better job taking care of our urban core. Because if something happens there, it's gonna affect all of us. We all depend on the urban core of Miami. That's very important. And you mentioned something that is um, very important to a lot of the people that do watch us, mm -hmm. and, and you said flooding. Yes. Flooding is big. And I know we have uh, pumps that we've installed, right? Right. Can you elaborate a little more about how? Where there are higher technology pumps, so they actually drill down and get rid of, of the water in very different ways that are very effective. We need more of them. In fact, one of the things we were trying to get funded at the state level was a pump in the, in the Brickle area which unfortunately did not get funded. But again, this is what we're talking about, right? We, we talk about we have the plans, we have the talent driving all of this, but what we don't have is the funding. And, and that's really desperately needed, desperately needed for our city. And I'm sure it's part of uh, your plans. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Listen, that and affordable housing are two of the top priorities that's for our district. You know, we also have the Omni CRA in our district, and we, we just kicked off a great affordable housing project called Wynwood Works in partnership with the Haslam Foundation right there in Wynwood. And we're, we're working on other projects with the foundation, so we're super excited about that. Uh, there's just so much opportunity. The Miami Marine Stadium is something we're working on. We're looking at elevating that again. It's an iconic, iconic structure in Miami. It's been left derelict without funding, without any real action behind the project. Well, now that project is coming forward, and we're super excited about that as well. I know you hit the ground running. I've seen you with the Wynwood Works and right. with the Marine Stadium, and um, Haslam is a big, big proponent of affordable housing and yeah. giving back to the community. That was amazing. He's I, amazing. I can't speak to how amazing he is. Yes. I just can't speak to how he's a Miamian in every sense of that word. I mean, I have that in me too, right? So yeah. we bonded on on the, the Miami. Like, this is our home. We want our home to be great. Like, we want it to be at the global level. That's what, that's why Miami uh, Marine Stadium is so important. 
because it's such an iconic. That should be on the world stage. I that love. Structure, I love the Mar. I, it, it's such a beautiful stadium. Come on, I remember. It's a, so iconic. Yeah, and even for us, you know, as Cuban Cuban Americans or Latinos and Hispanics, I mean, uh, la, la Ermita La Caridad, when that procession was always done there, you know, yeah. in that stadium, and knowing that Hilario Candela was the architect, the original architect. There's so many stories in our structures. Not just here, we can talk about uh, Little Bahamas, which we haven't you know, really elevated to, to a certain level. In our district, we're now trying to get Little Bahamas to be recognized very similarly to Little Havana. So oh, we wow. wanna, we want, nice. we, we've been talking to the Greater Miami Visitors and Conventions Bureau about making it, having the buses kind of start going through uh, Little oh, Bahamas. That would be awesome. We're looking at pro bono people who are trying to train folks from Little Bahamas to do historic tours. There's so much history in Little Bahamas that we, we don't even know as Miamians. So, and, and I figure, you know, I kind of make a joke about this, but I mean, if people can get off of those tour buses and go to Little Havana and take pictures of the chicken and the this and the mariquitas, <laughs> I'm like, listen, Little Bahamas has amazing conch fritters, Absolutely. has amazing history. They could do pop-ups. There's a lot of economic revitalization that we want to encourage through our district. Everywhere from the Omni CRA to Little Bahamas, up to the Upper East Side, all the way through Morningside. I see Britain. the vitality, yeah. and I, I, I can hear it in your voice. <laughs> can you elaborate more on, on, on the um, promoting equality and diversity? Because you did mention it as far as affordable housing and, and, and your vision, but can you elaborate a little more on that? Yes, I, I can, and that's kind of harder because it means many different things to many different people. To me, it means opportunity. And sometimes we talk to people and we think, well, you know, there's this opportunity. There's a big difference between like the probability of something or the opportunity of something. Every, there's a very little probability you're going to be Udonis Haslam, <laughs> <There's>, <laughs> right? <laughs> but, but people say, oh, but you had the opportunity. Well, no, we need to make opportunities more available to everyone at every economic layer just not having anything to do with color, gender, uh, right. religious you know, affiliation, all that stuff, which I think we've kind of done a good job of moving through those issues. I just, need, I just think we need to keep emphasizing that and reminding ourselves of the importance of opening our doors to everyone. I know you have a couple of projects that are in the works. And I know people follow your page as well. They follow us, and they've gotten to become a little more acquainted with you since you have your own you're on your platforms, but what else do you have in the works? Because as I said off camera, we have an open invitation for you because you hit the ground running and I know there's other things that you have in the works and I want you to come back and talk about other projects that you have in, in, in mind and what you want to do. You've been commissioner for five months. Four. Four months. We're all, Four. Okay, well, hey, <laughs> you've done quite a few things already, but I want you to come back and talk, but what do you want people to know about what Damien Pardo has done since he became elected I in think November? the most important thing, and by the way, when I talk about me or Damien Pardo, it's obviously an amazing staff that we've built, a great chief of staff, deputy chief of staff. Awesome. That's like I'm my team so, that's here. Right, <laughs> I'm so proud of the people that have chosen to work in our office awesome. because at no moment do I think it's like a paycheck or quite the opposite. They are committed Miamians really looking out. And, and I think what has Damien Pardo done? I think I've been able to communicate a vision about engaging our community in ways where the city has not done that previously. And what I mean by that is we go out, we do forums. When I go to a meeting, I don't leave that meeting. I stay whatever meeting I'm at till the very end. So does whatever staff is with me. And we let everyone know we are here to take questions. We are here to have conversations. We make it a point. In fact, we're doing something that I don't think many people have done prior to us. We're geofencing areas. So, for example, if we're doing a forum in Little Bahamas and there's something important like Varick Pool coming up or the Coconut Grove Playhouse, we're going to geofence that area. And the same way during a campaign, you would get a text that said, hey, this is Damien Pardo. I'm running for office, right? That kind of text that comes through your phone. Right. You're going to get a text that says, hey, District 2 is working on the Virick Pool. And here are some options for you to think about. What would you like to see in District 2? Or we're holding a meeting at whatever center where we're holding the meeting. So we're communicating differently. We're trying to modernize our outreach so that we get more voices. Because typically what happens is you get a few people who are extremely vocal 
and they are the ones who are representing the entire community. And that's not always right because people don't have time for that. People have homes and families, and so they may not have time to actually go to a forum or go to a meeting, but they have time to open their text and so weigh how, in. So how does it work? So do they have to sign up? No, the, it's the same way that, that during a campaign you get the numbers from from basically the... the so you have a pool, okay, so you have a pool of numbers correct. of people that have registered with your office, right? Right. And then they get, wow, that's amazing. Right. So it's a great way to, to reach out to them, tell them, hey, I'm working on this, I'm doing right. this. Right. That's awesome. But that's more so great. even the way in, for example, do you want this kind of pool or do you want that kind of pool? What's your opinion on this? Okay. And then they give the opinion, and that's really important for our office because now we know, well, the most vocal people are saying this, but these people are saying this. People are so people are just, they don't want to read that two uh, things that are very lengthy. No. So it's just easier, yeah, and Much that's a easier. great approach. That's a great Much approach. Much easier. I commend yeah. you for that. That's so awesome. So I think outreach, engagement are things that, that has been there from the vision that everyone is happy to work with because th the more we get, the better we do for everyone. Well, thank you for uh, being with us here today. My pleasure. And you have an open invitation to come back. No, I Let's would love say to. Six, I would love six, to. Around Christmas time. How's that sound? Sounds great. Awesome. Sounds great. Thank you. Thank you so much, thank you, Kenya, for being with and us. And your staff. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thanks. And that wraps it up for our edition of Empower 305. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.